thanks very much uh, for this kind invitation to be with uh, you today. Thanks uh, to Jerry and the organizers. It's my first time here, and um, I'm looking forward to the next one already. So I'm, I'm going to give you some observations on research at, at the World Bank, and I'm going to uh, draw from uh, this uh, report that we recently produced uh, on uh, the influence of uh, World Bank research. Uh, this report uh, in past uh, editions has been uh, incredibly soporific, so it could be usefully Ooh. recommended as a sleeping aid. But we try, we've been trying to change that and uh, use the occasion to learn something. And I'll t tell you what we learned about the um, influence of World Bank research. But first, let me start along the same lines as Olivier. Happily, he raised many of these issues already, so I can go quickly over this. Why should the World Bank be doing research at all? Uh, there are a number of reasons, but the main two I would like to highlight. On the one hand, research is needed to generate knowledge about development, knowledge that is a public good for consumption of the uh, research and policy-making community. Much of that research wouldn't be otherwise produced. Um, that, this may not be uh, the same in other disciplines, but in development is certainly uh, the case. But in addition, there is another important objective, which is to guide the policy advice and the operational practice, uh, the lending, if you will, of, uh, of uh, the World Bank. Now, looking to the future, to the extent that, as we discussed yesterday, there is a transformation of the World Bank from increasingly irrelevant lender in, in financial markets to an uh, uh, important advisor to, uh, uh, to policymakers, to the extent that there is the, such switch to what's called a knowledge bank, then one would expect that uh, research and knowledge within the institution would acquire an increasingly predominant role. That's clearly not the case today in terms of resources. Uh, research broadly understood um, absorbs about 3% of the World Bank budget. That's a number that's been on the decline. Our calculations for um, the sister institution uh, uh, is uh, that they spend at least twice as much. The Fed, not to, to speak of the Fed, that is probably in, in the uh, uh, neighborhood of 12% uh, or so. Now, research, uh, the, the value of, of knowledge, if you will, in development agencies is actually not uh, being studied all that much, but we have some concrete evidence I would like to uh, bring to you on the effects of applying knowledge in, in operational work at the bank in particular. For example, we know from a recent work by R. Cray that most of the variance in the performance of projects doesn't come from uh, factors having to do with country conditions or sector, uh, uh, sectoral uh, uh, issues and, and so forth. Uh, actually, most of the variation comes from uh, project-specific uh, features, how well the project is designed, how well the project is implemented, supervised, and so forth. We also know that how uh, effective uh, projects uh, and loans in general are is strongly related to the quantity and quality of, uh, of uh, prior uh, work, analytical work, as it is called in the parlance, developed in, in, in operations. And there is uh, quite a, a number of papers looking at this uh, um, over the years. And lastly, we also know that uh, the use of uh, research or research results, whether World Bank or otherwise, and the use of World Bank researchers in, in operations is also strongly correlated with the quality of, uh, of operational products, as assessed by an independent watchdog. Here, I'm, I'm, I'm showing to you the uh, a breakdown of, uh, of a number of, of uh, uh, operational products that were rated by uh, an independent uh, uh, rater. Um, that is unfortunately gone, has been disbanded in recent years, from unsat unsatisfactory to highly satisfactory. And on the vertical axis, uh, uh, the, uh, the panel of evaluators looked, among other things, at mentions of uh, research uh, results or research publications that appeared in the respective documents, whether bank or otherwise. And as you can see, there is a clear positive correlation. And the same applies to the use of, of researchers from the institution in the preparation of, of the specific operational products. Now, like Olivier said, research at the World Bank is different from academic research in a number of dimensions. First of all, research is expected to focus on development, growth, poverty-related issues. 
research is applied to a large extent, there is very little, and there should be uh, conceivably little, um, uh, purely theoretical research. In fact, the collection and construction of, uh, of data is a large part of, uh, of the um, uh, research activities uh, of the institution. Measurement of, uh, of key magnitudes, such as uh, poverty or, or, or uh, purchasing power parities, is another key undertaking. And this is related to what we call wholesale research, which is essentially gathering uh, of uh, data and tools that are, are then put at the disposal of other researchers so they can actually develop their own research. And that's another public good dimension that uh, plays an important role um, in, in, uh, in research at the bank. Research, lastly, has to focus on, on topics of policy relevance. In, in the parlance of the 2006 research evaluation, this was uh, called uh, useful topics as opposed to academia, which I guess was expected to focus on useless topics. Academic publication is not a, 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 the objective of, of this kind of research. However, it's important to keep in mind that it plays an important role in order to assure quality and credibility, that research results actually pass the uh, uh, um, inspection of, of peer review and they're, they're up to, to technical standards. So I will be talking about publications a, a bit. Um, here you can see the, the thematic concentration of, uh, of bank research uh, at the bottom. Uh, there is a world cloud of uh, the frequency of uh, words appearing in titles of, of uh, World Bank published articles. Evidence, developing countries are very prominent there. Uh, the, the top cloud is the academic cloud, if you will, and the topics are uh, somewhat different and the, clearly the order of, order of priority is not the same. Now, all in all, the bank is uh, the leading producer of, uh, of uh, research on development economics uh, by, uh, by uh, most uh, measures we can think of. This is uh, the rating that arises from a database called RIPEC. Uh, you probably are familiar with it, that compiles the publications of a vast number of, uh, of uh, researchers in, in uh, um, academic and policy institutions. And uh, according to a mashup index that such a uh, organization compiles, the, the bank comes uh, ahead of any other institution in terms of, uh, of uh, its uh, production of uh, uh, research on development economics. In fact, the bank comes twice, uh, the first and third, for reasons that I don't quite understand. Uh, 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 so if we were to combine first and third place, I'm sure we will be even higher up. Um, there's a quite a variety of, of uh, published outputs that, in, in the end, are the vehicle, through, uh, one of the vehicles through which uh, research is disseminated. Here you can see a, a comparative perspective, and, and the blue line is, uh, represents journal articles. The uh, pink line is uh, working papers. Those have become, over the years, the, the dominant way of uh, disseminating research results by, uh, by bank uh, researchers. So let's think for, for a moment about the external impact. Uh, this is what uh, we do in, the, um, in this research report, this publication, that is, by the way, available on, on the website of the bank. The um, um, exercise that we uh, did for this was to compare the performance of the bank with uh, a number of, uh, of uh, top universities and, and a number of other um, um, international institutions, including the, the fund, uh, all uh, regional development banks, uh, and a couple others. Uh, we chose the top universities uh, 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 in the world, you could say. Uh, ten of them, I believe, are the well-known U.S. universities, a couple of European, three European universities, uh, to, uh, as a benchmark for comparison. So if we look at the production of uh, research and development economics, uh, the, the bank is uh, clearly uh, at the top. Depending on the measure you think of, uh, it can be uh, can place first on, or, or, or second. Uh, if we use narrower or, or, or broader uh, thematic uh, sets, uh, if we look at um, broader or narrower um, outlets, uh, journals, then the, the thing varies a bit, but the bank is uh, clearly well represented. But what, what's really important is not the volume of what you put out, what's important is the influence that uh, what you put out has on development thinking. Measure that impact is not a trivial matter, but if we think, if we believe that whatever impacts on development thinking or on thinking more generally has to be referred to and cited by other thinkers down the road, then we can look as an imperfect measure to standard metrics of scholarly influence that have to do with citations of, of uh, published work 
or a, a condensed measure of such citations that in the, in the technical parlance is called the H index. The H index is a number X that tells you how many publications, uh, that X publications have been cited at least, at least uh, uh, X times. And I, I won't, bother you with, uh, won't bother you with the details, but by those measures, uh, again, the uh, result that we get is that bank research is highly influential. How exactly it places relative to um, the leading universities is, uh, uh, depends on what exact measure and source we use, but it, it is certainly not uh, at the bottom. It's uh, closer to the top in general. And um, um, it's uh, always at the top of the international organizations. Now, all this has to do with the external audience, but uh, we should worry about the internal audience. What about impact within the institution the, on the activities of the institution? One, one important link between research and operations at the World Bank is that researchers are, uh, uh, have the mandate to devote at least one third of the time to uh, working for operations. And this is support, as we call it, and it's paid support. It's not that we supply their work for free. Actually, there has to be a demand on the other side. This has a number of advantages. One is that the findings of uh, research are uh, at the direct disposal of, of, uh, of practitioners uh, in, uh, embodied in the researchers themselves. And also it's a source uh, the, 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 in, in the opposite direction. It's a good source of questions for subsequent research and that those questions will arise in, in, in the process of, of doing the operational support. Now, all this is uh, the supply side of, of research, what, what researchers do, offer, if you will. But what about the demand side? And that's an area where we know little. So um, one thing that we did for this report was to run a big survey of senior operational staff of the institution to uh, inquire about their perceptions regarding the usefulness and the, and the familiarity they have with, uh, with uh, bank research. Now, demand in principle should be related to the incentives for using knowledge in, 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 in operations, right? And, and here, one has to worry about the fact that uh, in in the World Bank, uh, there is a, a historically a lending culture that rewards, particularly from the career perspective, pushing out loans rather than the effectiveness of, of those operations. The effectiveness is only can, can only be assessed uh, long after whoever gave the loan is gone from, from the position, so the, the reward structure is not well matched to, to, uh, um, to um, um, protect uh, effectiveness. Over time, there's been at the bank a decline in the quality of economic analysis according to independent uh, watchdogs uh, in the institution. And that has uh, been, uh, that has come along, and I think uh, that was mentioned yesterday, along with the weakening of, uh, of the quality assurance mechanisms that used to be strong uh, uh, before and are much weaker these days. So um, what do we find from this uh, survey? Well. Uh, broadly speaking, there are two different groups of, uh, of uh, operational staff uh, in this uh, context. Some are very familiar uh, with uh, research. And that particularly applies to those working in, in the social sectors, if you will, poverty, finance, education, and so forth. Those working on the hard sectors, energy, transport, uh, traditional infrastructure, are generally much uh, less uh, familiar with, uh, with research. Interestingly, those account for a, a big share of total bank lending, but for a small share of the staff who is actually familiar with research. And it's not that those staff who are not familiar with bank research prefer outside research in general. From the survey, what we find is that they wholeheartedly support the, having a, a research in-house, but uh, they don't know what that research uh, serves for. Across operational units, uh, there's also the finding that familiarity with research is related to technical or absorptive capacity. The more economists uh, or PhDs that are in a, in a particular unit, the more familiar the, the, the staff there report uh, uh, being with, uh, with research. And, and uh, the bank has been uh, switching, his, uh, t tilting its hiring practices in, uh, in the last decade or so against uh, away from economists and PhD, incidentally. Now, um, there is a persistence in the use of research, so those who use it uh, are repeat customers. Most uh, respondents uh, claim a rising demand, so I'm, I'm, next year I'm, I'm going to be using even more research. And um, 
the uh, extent to which research is used is also highly correlated with the perceived value of research. So if we ask practitioners, do, does research help you in, 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 in your work, do you value uh, it for your work, then of course they uh, tend to report, uh, when, when they answer uh, in the affirmative, they also tend to report higher um, uh, degrees of uh, familiarity with research. To conclude, I have just uh, um, um, to, um, um, I would like to show you this typology in which uh, we can organize in a two by two matrix the um, uh, operational staff that uh, reply to the survey, uh, depending on, on the um, horizontal axis, the value they attach uh, to, uh, to research in, in, in their own work, and on the vertical axis, the familiarity they, they uh, claim to have uh, with research. So, the top half of the table refers to those that are not very familiar with what's going on from the research side. The, and we can further break those down into two sets, those that don't know but don't care, if you will, and, and those that uh, um, uh, don't know but would like to know something because research uh, is perceived to have value for them. And those are perhaps <laughs> the two areas where, where uh, one has to worry about what the frictions between the supply and the demand side are, these people that express low familiarity in particular those that would like to, to, uh, uh, to uh, use research. So what supply and demand factors are at work? And I'll conclude with this. Uh, well, on the one hand, it's clear that uh, supply may not match the needs of practitioners. Maybe in the hard sectors, in infrastructure, we are not producing the kind of research that uh, they uh, would need. On the other hand, it's, uh, it, it's uh, uh, interesting that when asked about the responsiveness of bank research to the, the stated uh, demands, uh, the um, average scores are very high. In fact, uh, most uh, practitioners think there is a very high responsiveness, although, again, those working on the hard sector show a lower score uh, than the rest. But we have to think also of the demand side. Demand, in the end, the demand for knowledge, uh, the, the demand for research, uh, largely depends on the extent to which uh, the development impact of, of operations has to be established when undertaking those, uh, those operations. It's not uh, uncommon in the, in the hard sectors to, to take that impact almost for, for granted. Uh, you build a road, uh, well, the road will do good. Uh, whereas in the social sectors where impacts are much more diffuse in general, one has to work harder to establish the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the need and, and the merit of uh, an operation, and therefore there is uh, more uh, logically more use of research. So it, if there are mechanisms in the institution, the quality enhancement mechanisms uh, and, 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 and the culture, uh, uh, the lending culture were to shift towards a knowledge culture uh, more rapidly, then it's likely that this demand for, for uh, learning about impact uh, would uh, significantly rise and, and perhaps we would uh, see um, a, a different picture than, than the one I was showing you. In the end, the, the point is that, on the, well, on the supply side, there are certainly mismatches. On the demand side, the incentives that uh, operational staff face in their work are extremely important for the equilibrium uh, research outcome. Thank you. Thank you.